So this is classical DNS first. 
uh, so that we can see the difference. In classical DNS, it's all UDP and it's uh, unencrypted. And the client here has a question. So what is the IP address of that, that, that example.org? And it sends the query off to a DNS resolver, or so often called a DNS cache. And that cache talks to the root name servers, to top local domain servers, and then to the authoritative server of the domain in question. And that server sends the answer, being cached here and being sent back to the, uh, to the client. Now, with DNS over TLS, the picture changes a little bit. Uh, it could go, this green line here, which is the DNS over TLS connection, it could go actually here and terminate at the local resolver that is being uh, distributed by DHCP. But in 100% of cases today, it does not, because I haven't seen any network that is deploying DNS over TLS at this point. So what happens then is that if there's a client that is DNS over TLS enabled, uh, it will go, it will first probe this one if port 853 is open, and if the port is not open, it goes to a fallback server, which in our case, in, in, in today's uh, infrastructure, it's almost always Google DNS. <laughs> now, why that is, uh, we will see in a moment. So it will ask 8888, but it will do so authenticated and encrypted. So it will authenticate that it's really talking to Google and not to someone else that uh, does some BGP tricks to reroute the data and announces 8 slash 8 or something. Um, and it will encrypt all the data so that nobody here in the network or somewhere out there can uh, look at the data. Uh, what also would be possible, but still isn't being seen in the wild, is if someone still does forwarding to a, to a, to a local ISP, um, and that could also be secured by DNS over TLS. But uh, well, first, I haven't seen any provider that is offering DNS over TLS. And secondly, in today's network, it's almost always faster to do iterative name resolution yourself and not forwarding to your provider. So I don't really recommend doing that, meaning forwarding to your provider. Mm -hmm. that, that is something we did in the 1990s, but not today anymore. Um, well, how about performance? Uh, so, UDP was used in DNS uh, because it's quick, it's fast, it's lightweight. If we now replace that with TCP and we put TLS with handshake and crypto and all uh, of that on top of it, isn't that very slow? Yes. Except if you use the old goodness of TLS 1.3, which is the new TLS um, standard that just came out in August this year. Um, because that has pipelining, that has TCP first open, or can use TCP first open, and has zero round trip time resume. Uh, with that, uh, if the connection is open already, you get performance that is very, very similar to the old DNS over TC, uh, T, uh, UDP. In some cases, it's even faster, because you have TCP, and with TCP, you detect earlier if, if packages get lost. With UDP, you just send packages out, and then you have a timer running, and you wait for an answer. And if the answer is not coming in a certain amount of time, you have to retransmit. You have to send the query again. With TCP, you get much quicker the information that some packages on the way got lost. So retransmission is, is faster. And in shitty networks, that means that uh, DNS over TCP connection, uh, either TLS or HTTPS, is actually faster in these kind of networks. However, today, most implementations that we have and that I will talk about later on are not optimized. They don't use TLS 1.3 and like for example the Unbound server, it does support DNS over TLS, but for every query it opens a new TLS connection. So with every query it makes a TCP handshake and a TLS crypto handshake. Then it sends the query out, answers coming back, tears down TCP and TLS, and for the next query it does the same. Uh, needless to say, that is not fast. But software will evolve. This will be made better with the next release. Um, we can use DNS over TLS in two specific modi, uh, or modes, uh, which first is opportunistic, uh, means we first try to do encryption and authentication, 
But if it doesn't work for some reason, we fall back to unencrypted normal DNS and use that. Or we configure strict mode, uh, which means that if TLS or authentication fails, we don't communicate with the server. Uh, then no service is better than unsecured service. And that is the policy decision uh, that must be made by the user of the machine that does the DNS uh, communication. So what about uh, implementations today? Uh, Android Pi has DNS over TLS built in. Yes, question. Again, what name is the uh, server certificate validated? Um, usually today, in today's um, uh, configurations or uh, implementations, you have a configuration file where you put in the IP address or host name of the server and you put a hash of the certificate in there. Either the hash of um, um, of the whole certificate or the hash of um, the key uh, the, 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 the or pinning for, for the certificate that is for the uh, for the issuing CA. It is from the RC uh, planned to either uh, authenticate against uh, the, the internet PKI that is uh, looking in the trust store of your computer and see if there's a root certificate for um, that uh, certificate or whether <coughs> use they. That is, you put uh, a hash of your certificate, your self-signed certificate, uh, of the server certificate in DNS, and the, the software can check against DNS. So I need glue-like records for the DNS certificate, <coughs> because I can't resolve it. Um, yeah, there's always a bootstrapping uh, here, which needs to go over normal DNS. But if, yeah. And Dane required you to use DNS second in Of course. Yes. Which... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so Android has it, and, and that is the, the largest install, install base of uh, uh, DNS over TLS at the moment. And uh, that does what I talked about. It first broke port 853 on the result that is being distributed by DHCP. If that port isn't open or doesn't speak TLS, then it uh, goes to Google DNS, which is the built-in fallback inside Android. Uh, it can be configured, but most users probably just have it as the default. And uh, that brings a lot of data into Google's network, in Google <laughs> Resolvers, which is actually not as good, not very good for us here in the in the Western world, but it might be not as bad for people like in, in Asia or some, some other countries where there is surveillance, uh, mass surveillance going on. <coughs> it, might, it might be a little bit better there to have the, the data going to Google than having going back to the local government. Uh, Linux System D has in one of its latest incarnations as the Amazon TLS implemented as a system service. The not uh, DNS resolver, unbound and power DNS, uh, DNS disk. So not PowerDNS, the resolver has it, but uh, PowerDNS has a very good load balancer for DNS called DNS Disk, and that also implements DNS over TLS. So with that, you can load balance over multiple resolvers in the backend. Um, there is, on the client side, the DNS privacy daemon called Stubby, which is from the DNS privacy project. There's J JDNS proxy, which I haven't played with, then your friendly DNS, which I just found yesterday, and the DNS crypt people, doesn't have, they don't have an implementation at the moment, but they already have defined the stems <coughs> to configure DNS over TLS servers in their software. However, they have the, the other one that I will talk later on. Uh, on the server side, uh, there's Core DNS, which is the, the, the new DNS uh, server for Kubernetes, so for cloud deployments, uh, which will replace DNS Mask, which is currently the DNS uh, result of being used in Kubernetes. There's Tenta DNS, uh, Tenta being a, a company that makes a privacy enhanced browser. They also have uh, uh, this uh, DNS server, and then every DNS server can be upgraded to be a uh, DNS or a TLS server by just putting a, a TLS endpoint on port 853 and then proxying the unencrypted data to port 53 TCP on the same machine. Um, so that's very easy with S-Tunnel, HA proxy, Nginx, Ray, Relay D, uh, or even commercial load balances that can do TLS uh, termination. 
So I even did that for Microsoft DNS uh, in one instance, and that works just fine. On the internet, we have Cloudflare APNIC uh, that uh, deploy uh, DNS over TLS. Pod uh, 9 has its Surfnet, which is the um, the uh, net provider for the universities in the Netherlands. They have public uh, servers that can be used. Very sign. The company runs uh, CommonNet and uh, one of the Rhythm servers. They have it. And there's uh, more privately run uh, DOT servers that you can find on the DNS privacy purchase. All the blue ones here in my slides are links. You can find the slides online if you click on them. You go, go to the page where it describes how to configure these services. So this is DNS over TLS. Before I go forward, any questions about DNS over TLS? Yes, please. Sorry, there was a question just as a just before that, you were saying that you don't recommend using the provider's DNS because uh, it's not the 1990s. Yes. But it cannot, by using the provider's DNS because of the IP of that, when they go to a content distribution network, they'll understand where the request is coming from and serve content locally in country, uh, which enhances privacy and performance in some way. Like, obviously, there's the issue of the security side of things. So, like, I'm not too sure I would agree with the, you know, the basic saying, don't use the provider DNS because... Yeah, but some of them are lying, <laughs> or some of them are just intercepting uh, DNS traffic and redirect them to their own server. Just like in the mobile world, which is, come on. Okay, yeah, but... but some of them do that, and, and you want to, to get around this. Okay. Some are actually by, by law, for instance, to check the public. Uh, yeah, where's that interest? Needed to. That, that's why I say they, they're lying. Like, they're lying about some things. There are sites that are blocked. blocked. I'm not saying it's something different than not providing yeah. anything. So yeah. most, most of the time in, in the past, the people forwarding to their ISPs was because of performance, because yeah. the ISP had a much bigger pipe into the internet than the organization that is doing. Uh, the DNS servers. Nowadays, it's not true, at least not for DNS. DNS is yeah. very lightweight, even if we use uh, TCP and TLS for that. And uh, it's uh, usually much faster in latency um, if you do the resolution yourself instead of forwarding to some of them. Some of them are broken. Some of them are not uh, validating DNS, say, or yep. they're too slow. Yep. There are many reasons not to use your own ISP's servers. Okay. So the, the other new kid on the block is uh, DNS over HTTPS. So this is also TLS encrypted, but the difference is that with <coughs> DNS over TLS, the ones we had before, we have um, our own port, and it's, uh, it's just DNS data, uh, just encrypted <coughs> here. The DNS is wrapped first in an HTTP request, and an HTTP answer is coming back. And that is then encrypted. So we have another layer in between. We have uh, web, that is HTTPS, we have TLS, we have TCP, um, and then we have uh, IP below that. It's currently still a draft, um, but it's uh, at the IS IESG, uh, that is the, uh, the part of the ITF that uh, signs off uh, the, the RFCs. And uh, it is already signed off, so it's just in the editing phase. Uh, it will probably appear as an RFC um, every day now. So it, it will become an RFC very, very soon. Um, the URL for doing DNS queries is HTTPS server name dot well known that slash uh, DNS dash query. And it gives us encryption and authentication. And there is a, a Firefox beta test in Firefox 61 and up, 61, 62 and so on, that got a lot of bad press, at least in the social media, in August when um, some blogger in, in Switzerland wrote about that. Reason here is that for the beta test, uh, which is opt-in, so it's not enabled by the <coughs> users, so you have to enable it in order to use that. For that test, Mozilla uh, entered a partnership with Cloudflare. And Cloudflare uh, provided the, or pro still provides the infrastructure, the DNS servers that do DNS over HTTPS. And uh, a lot of people thought that as uh, a foreshadowing that Mozilla will enable this for all users in the same configuration. That is that Firefox 
will at one point of time in the future send all the inquiries to a US uh, company called Cloudflare. And of course, uh, a lot of people were concerned about privacy here. Because uh, if then all, everything goes to Cloudflare, that would be a bad move. However, that was never the plan of Mozilla, at least so far as I know from my talks to people at Mozilla at the ITF, and also from, from reading their, uh, their public um, announcements about that. That was explicitly done for the beta testing. Uh, in the ITF, Mozilla and other people are currently discussing a way to, to decentralize uh, DNS over HTTPS. Uh, one of the ideas is that potentially every web server out there on the internet could be a DNS resolver. And that DNS server could announce that being able by um, sending a, a specific header, for example, in the, in the web uh, answer, saying, okay, here's your web page you requested, but by the way, you know that I'm also a DNS resolver and you can reach me on this URL. And then, if that works, then a browser could just collect all the different resolvers in the internet and distribute all the queries among them, either uh, given of a policy of performance or privacy. So privacy would be that every query is then going to a different resolver out there in the internet. Isn't that dangerous? Uh, so that is as dangerous as using unsecured DNS. That is, we have to use DNSSEC for that. Because with DNSSEC, we don't care where we get the data from, because it has signatures. We can prove the signatures locally. And if the data is signed and is proven to be good, then we don't care which server, which, D, uh, which web server gave us this information. You constantly yeah. saw that most people only visit a handful of web pages. I mean, I would assume that uh, there is a lot of talk in the remote scale. Yes. Would it be so that, I mean, companies like Google and Facebook that most people visit would get enough DNS traffic to, to profile you anyway with this? Um, yes, there, there would be also maybe some blacklisting in there and there would be some bootstrapping, uh, but this is all undecided. It's an open discussion currently in the ITF. So uh, don't don't get the wrong impression that this is already decided and it will work that way. It's an open discussion currently. Uh, there are many proposals on the table and there's no clear winner which proposal. But what I want to say is that uh, there's no plans of Mozilla, as far as I know, to send all the user's data, all the users of Firefox, to one provider. That was never, never the case. It's not that clear that they're not. They now have written that explicitly in the, in the, in the last announcement. Oh. Yeah. One of the main reasons you, you may not want that is because you don't want your browser to have a different DNS policy than the rest of the system right. or the rest of your organization or whatever. That is one of the main criticism and it's completely valid. Well, yeah, that that is, and, and that someone else just gets all your... Yes. Even, even before the privacy implications. Mm -hmm. sure. Not even thinking about that. Integrated the support for uh, group policies and stuff like that in Firefox 60. So, if, if you have a corporate policy, you should better explicitly configure that policy because otherwise your users might so just yeah. as well do what they want on other parts of the system. Yes. So, so how does DNS of HTTPS works? Um, there is a client, the client sends the data over port 443 to some web server. The web server runs a DNS over HTTP server software, um, decodes the query, sends it off to a hopefully local DNS resolver, and that does normal thing. Uh, that server does normal iterative name resolution, unsecured over UDP, answer comes back, and then it goes encrypted here and here. So why? Why is this being done? First, port 443 is almost always open on firewalls. The problem with DNS over TLS is it's run, it runs on a, on a non-standard port, at least not what normal traffic in, in for firewalls is. Uh, the port 853 is not open. That means that even though DNS over TLS is a, is a very good technical solution, in practice it doesn't work because all firewalls block port 853. Uh, port 443 is, is open and can be used. In that case, why not just upgrade the HTTP connection to uh, 
DMS over TCP. HTTP connections can be upgraded for stuff like web sockets. Yes. Why not upgrade it to DNS over TCP inside the? Um, I think it is something like that because um, it goes over port 443, but it's it's not an HTML payload. It's just raw binary data that flows there. Mm -hmm. um, what it's about the proxies in the middle that recognize HTTPS and drop everything that it's not? It is HTTPS, but because it's encrypted, a proxy has no business to look into that, and actually with TLS 1.3, it's not yeah. possible anymore. And Unless open, 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 open VPN will be blocked by those things as well, which is... is yeah. yeah, but the thing is, no, unless it does mine in the middle, which requires you to have a special root certificate yeah. to fake that, yeah. it won't work. And it won't block, it is either block or nothing. Open VPN is different than a normal So this looks for firewall and for some content inspection machine. It looks really like web traffic. Yes. Uh, at least we know that there's no way to detect whether there is web Content flowing, or whether there is DNS content flowing. Page, page size. Mm -hmm. Because of this, because of this, we have this padding in there. So the, the, the DNS client uh, and the server can put random junk into that to make it bigger, so that uh, from the from the packet sizes you can't detect DNS traffic from web traffic. Blue code will find a way to block it. For sure. like we we will see. Uh, I hope not. Uh, for uh, sure. Uh, there are two aspects here. If, if the firewall just opens port 443 and lets all the encrypted traffic pass by a raw TCP connection, then of course it has no way to look inside the packets. But in many large organizations, you have firewalls, and I figure this is your point that uh, on demand, man in the middle via self signed certificates and a push yep. certificate. Yeah, but that is not possible. It, 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 it won't work. It's possible here. Yes. Uh, and if, then it depends on the policy. If the policy is to just let regular HTTP yes. traffic through, then the DNS over HTTP will go through also because it is HTTP requests. It yep. is get or, or, or post requests that are not yeah, but quite current. The thing is, but it uses a specially crafted URL uh, on the server and is regular HTTP for the DNS queries and for the response. Of course, this opens up the possibility that because the URL is something under slash dot well known, like the, the ACME challenge stuff that we all do nowadays, that this is explicitly blocked then by these files. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but technically it's regular HTTP. Yes, but the thing is the rest of the world, meaning the IDF, is moving toward blocking mine in the middle. I mean, with TLS 1.3, you just can't. Yeah. It won't work anyway. Yeah. So the, the rest of the world is moving toward blocking mine in the middle for good reasons and for the bad ones. Any firewall vendor will have a problem with that, and many yeah. large organizations. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> yep. There's going to be a whole region that has a problem with that, which is called the Middle East. <laughs> so, or China. Yeah. Yeah. You can mention yeah. metal. So, back, back to your last point. Yeah. DNS. Let's, let's discuss this later. Um, no, Besides going over the board, it's very easy to use in web applications. Uh, currently, if you are a programmer and you write a web application, the only thing you can do from JavaScript is asking for an A or quad A, that is asking for IP addresses. Now with this, you can ask for MX records, SRV records, TXT records. Of course, some people have fear that now there's more crap in the DNS that application developers will put in there. Yep. That will happen, of course. <laughs> that already happened. <laughs> yes. But, but it can also lead to better web applications. And also most programming languages have already an HTTPS API, which enables a lot of more programmers to, to work with the DNS and uh, use that in hopefully sensible manner. Um, uh, <laughs> famous last words. Yes. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Um, so about the developments, I was yep. Why would one want an application developer to implement his own DNS locale? No, no, no. Like this goes through Apple's APIs for Chris. Yeah, if you if you use 
with Apple APIs, for example, then it already implements, implements something like uh, looking for SRV records. But uh, a lot of uh, custom designed applications today don't use that. And a lot of uh, power of the DNS is, is not utilized because application developers don't know or can't use it. And my hope is here that a little bit more of the power of DNS can be utilized by uh, giving application developers access to that. Um, in ITF 100, that was in November in Singapore, uh, the working group was established. <coughs> the first ideas about DNS over HTTPS came about in early spring 2017. Then the next ITF in March, the document was done. So normally, writing an RFC and bringing that through the ITF takes years. Yes. Uh, and this is really, really remarkable to have a working group formed and having the document ready in the next meeting. So that shows how much interest there is in bringing this out. And this is not only Google and Firefox and, uh, and these. There's a lot of people who worked on this and brought that forward. Um, and there are already implementations in C, in Go, in Python, in Rust, in Java, and probably all other application languages that are available there. And new implementations are popping up literally every week. Uh, this is one that should uh, administrators and security people should uh, into account that filtering or inspection systems that rely on unencrypted DNS won't work anymore. In, environment with either DNS over TLS or DNS over HTTPS being used. So if uh, you do passive DNS collection for forensic reasons, or if you have an intrusion detection system that looks at the DNS traffic, it won't work as good anymore with the encrypted traffic because it can't look inside it. And we have even seen in April the first malware that is using DNS over HTTPS to talk to its control service. So lots of the bad guys are starting to use this. Um, so in the, the client Firefox, you can configure uh, what's called a TRR, a Trusted Recursive Resolver. Um, and you go into first about config and then you search for TRR and then you have all the, the configurations. This link shows you what you can put in there. And then you go to about networking and then you have uh, DNS and you have a column here called TRR. And when it says uh, true, that means that that from that name to that IP address was resolved over HTTPS and not over traditional DNS. Uh, you can in Firefox, you can configure you, that you want to use TRR, TRR first and then normal DNS as a fallback. You can say, you, I only want classic DNS, I only want HTTPS DNS, or a mix of both. Unfortunately, this doesn't work in FreeBSD. I've tested that. So you can go about networking, but you can't click anything here. You don't see anything. There's something broken, uh, broken there that we need to look into. Sorry, could you just explain the TRR? Is that like something that the browser is being configured for, or is it just giving you information about res the resolutions that have been made, like no, the DNS is, cache? That is uh, first. Uh, you go into the config, and there you configure. Um, that I can show you live here because this is a Firefox. Um, this currently runs with DNS over HTTPS. So about uh, config. Scary warning. Oh no! <laughs> uh, I search for TRR and then I make it a little bit bigger here. And everything that is in bold I have changed. So the networking PR URI, that is HTTPS Mozilla Cloud for DNS.com slash DNS query, that is the web server that uh, is the endpoint that takes the DNS request from the browser here. Uh, the mode is three, meaning I only want to have DNS over HTTPS. I don't want to use traditional DNS anymore. And there is a bootstrap address, which is the IP address of a traditional DNS server that is being used to resolve that name. Because you first have to resolve that name in order to get to that machine. But there's one traditional DNS query from the browser and then everything else goes over HTTPS. Is there a reason why you can configure only a single URI? You uh, because really currently um, in the beta they don't have the interface to configure more. <coughs> 
uh, because this is only for the beta test. <coughs> so this is not something that will stay in this way. Uh, once the, uh, the ITF has finished the way how to uh, discover more DNS over HTTPS servers or DNS over TLS servers, the interface will change. Sorry, it's, sorry about asking all these questions, but um, why, why would you have a DNS dependency for a DNS server? That is because you could put in a. Uh, so you know, you know, like, why can't you just go, well, is it like yeah. 1001? Yeah, it's good strategy. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, the main thing of all uh, DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS is that you don't fundamentally change the DNS protocol. You just wrap around it. So. For the browser? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why not but use no, that as the IP browser. address? Sorry? Instead of the URL. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, don't you, you, you that, could, yeah. So you, you, you need to name an IP anyway that, because you need to know the That's experiment. That's experiment. Because yeah. then you would require a certificate for with the subject or the name of your yes. IP address. That's you can uh, yeah, but, but, but don't discuss too much this interface because it's not only for the beta test. It won't change in the final version. Right. That's why they, they plan to use dot well now and then yeah. and think. Let's hope it up. So, uh, other clients, there's a Bromai browser, uh, which is, according to the website, I haven't tested it, uh, a privacy enhanced Chromium. And this uh, call, the command line. Uh, web downloading stuff, uh, which is actually written and uh, maintained by the same person, uh, Daniel Stenberg, who uh, works at Mozilla and is implementing the DNS of HTTPS in Firefox. So both implementations are more or less by the same person. Um, then on the resolver server side, uh, we have uh, your friendly DNS, we have DNS script. Uh, Besides their own DNS curve and DNS script protocol, they now also do DNS over HTTPS. Um, JDNS proxy again, then there's this uh, on GitHub, DNS over HTTPS. Server in client, there's one in Rust, there's one in Python, uh, there's one in Go, and yeah, this is some kind of red, uh, redundant. This is the, the client part of DNS script. So oh. you said that DNS script is already using HTTPS? It, uh, yes. yes. Now, if you download that and if you don't disable in the config, it will use it. Because it's already, I've tried that yesterday on FreeBSD, downloaded the page, <coughs> and the config, the default config, already has DNS over HTTPS in there. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you are a user of DNS script and you have upgraded, you already use DNS over HTTPS. Mm -hmm. I think PowerDNS has a version already or very close. Uh, I think I have that on the next slide. Ah, yeah, sorry. Um, at least they provide already an endpoint source service in the internet. Cloudflare has it. Then uh, there is the regular Cloudflare service, which has uh, uh, some surveillance from Cloudflare on there. And there is then the Mozilla one, which has less login. They Not say. zero, but they say yes. Uh, Mozilla says they have a special contract with Cloudflare. The Cloudflare is not allowed to do all the inspections that they do for their own service there. Including learning. Yeah. Uh, there's clean browsing, power DNS, blah, DNS, security DNS, and probably much more that I haven't found that are already uh, serving that. Also, this server, DO, default root CD, where the uh, slides are on, is also a DO uh, server because it's pretty easy to set it up. Um, similar developments, uh, there is a new RFC just out, I think, a few weeks, uh, it's on 427, uh, which talks about uh, how to do DNS messages in JSON. It makes it easier for the JavaScript guys uh, to parse. Uh, DNS HTTPS still has binary data, so if you, from JavaScript, if you use DNS of HTTPS, you get a binary block. And you need, to, in JavaScript, you need to fiddle out the bits and bytes of a DNS package, which is maybe not so easy. Um, Google has implemented DNS over JSON, over HTTPS, over TCP, always for, for a longer time. This is a server, and there's others and software that, that uh, have use of JSON. 
I'm not saying that this is all the way to go. So, so you're not endorsing that, no? I'm, no, I'm not endorsing that. <laughs> <laughs> no vomiting in the room, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, a very new development is DNS Open Quick. Uh, Quick being, uh, being a modern uh, TCP replacement from Google, uh, currently standardized in the ITF. Um, Google has worked on this many years, I think four or five years, and it's already implemented server side in, on YouTube and the Google search page and in Chrome. So if you use Chrome, if you go to uh, uh, to YouTube, you're currently already using Quick, very likely. It's based on UDP, but it has some TCP kind functions in there, so it, it has a session and a handshake in that. Um, and it's usually implemented inside applications, not in operating systems. The reason here is that uh, Google was very uh, frustrated by the speed that new developments in TCP entered the real internet, because you first go to the ITF, that takes multiple years, uh, then you have an RFC, then it takes multiple years for the operating system vendors to implement, and then because of long-term support, Linux and other operating systems, it takes 10 years after that to emerge in the internet so that you can use that, and that is too long. So they started implementing an application on top of UDP and doing their, their innovation there. And now they brought that into the ITF and it's currently being standardized. And they didn't stop that. They didn't just move it into user space, they encrypted all the header fields of the transport protocol as well, so that you can't do a load balancing app without decrypting the packets. Mm -hmm. So they ran a bit over the edge. And HTTP2 is based on Quick. Yes. In, T in TCP, of course. But yeah. it's HTTP2 is and the evolution adopted by the ITF for HTTP2. And, and because Quick is um, is based on UDP and because it's faster than classical TCP, um, the idea here was why not then use uh, DNS over Quick as well because it might be faster. So this is very, very early. There's, a, there's an RFC draft being written, uh, but that doesn't mean that it will go anywhere. It might just die. Uh, but we might might see in a few years from now that DNS over Quick will be a thing. It probably depends on the general uptake of Quick in, in other fields, in, in web and uh, maybe SMTP and other fields where Quick is also, also being used. So that could go then from the client to a quick web server. I hope it's not only Google, because if it is only Google, it would be bad for everyone. Uh, and then it goes to the cache, uh, um, hopefully also not Google, not all to Google at least. And do you then, need to store, sorry, yes. Do, do you need to store a certificate on your machine anyway, right? Do you need to have a certificate of the HTTP server? Um, on your side? No, you can you can authenticate that uh, either over Dane, look in DNS, or you can authenticate that with the trust store of your operating system mm -hmm. or your application. So certificate would be just an option, one of the options? It is, it should be used with authentication, so there should be a certificate on the server and should be tested, um, but you don't need to install that usually. As a, as a user, it just is there either in the application or in the operating system and you check against the root system. But you, you need a certificate on your side anyway. Maybe you don't need to install it, but you need a certificate yes. on your side yes. anyway. Yes. So. so this is a comparison chart uh, made by Christian Buitema, who is uh, one of the authors of the draft. And uh, of course, Quick and the uh -huh. of Quick uh, has the best uh, features compared with DTLS, TLS, TCP, and UDP. Uh, DTLS is uh, TLS over UDP, it's that brand TLS. Uh, but that is uh, something like a ghost. Uh, nobody has seen that implemented in the wild anywhere. So this is not relevant, but of course TLS is relevant and TCP and UDP is what we are today. So that was about. Uh, DNS over HTTPS, and now let's see what the time, a little bit of time left. I uh, would to like to um, introduce human minimization, which is also a privacy initiative, 
which is not about transport protocols, but uh, changing the way how DNS resolvers and author authoritative DNS servers uh, talk. Um, because or how the DNS protocol has evolved is that in the late 1980s, the, the first DNS RFCs have been written. And if you read the first uh, DNS RFCs, uh, mainly 1034, 1035, you will figure out that they are under specified. So there's a lot open, which is not in the document, how DNS should work. And then the first implementers, like Bind 4, uh, they tweaked it as long as it seems to work, this DNS thingy, and then everyone else copied from Bind 4. Um, so that uh, we came to a DNS protocol that is more chatty, that is transports more data than it really needs to do, at least in, in the modern world. So there's more data being requested and there's more data being delivered as, as needed. And that data is metadata that can be uh, can be collected by malicious people and can be used against people in the internet. And human minimization is to stop that, uh, to make to slim down DNS protocol on the on the uh, uh, implementation level, so that uh, only the data is being uh, transferred that is really really needed. The nice thing is that only the DNS resolvers need to be changed. Uh, we don't need to change all the authoritative servers, and we don't need to change the clients. And uh, changes on the resolver side are the easiest to deploy. Um, also, firewalls and all the other stuff, we don't change that. And it's not a change of the protocol, really. It's just an implementation change. It's a recommendation for implementers of DNS resolvers. Uh, first, I show you how traditional DNS name resolution works, and then in contrast to that, how QName name resolution works, QName minimized resolution works. We have here the client. The client is asking for dot 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 example de uh, called I record, which is a modern IPv6 enabled machine. It asks its resolver. And today, the resolver has no knowledge about the internet and the structure of DNS in the internet. This resolver doesn't know that. Uh, there is a structure, that there are top-level domains and second-level domains. Because in DNS, we could build a DNS system with just one big server. Yeah? We could build a DNS where we just have one root server that has all the data for all the hosts of the internet. <coughs> Wouldn't make sense, but technically possible. Uh, so because of that, the resolver today always asks the full question. It always asks what is the IPv6 address of www.example.de and ask that to the root name server. Of course, the root name server doesn't know the answer. It gives back a referral saying that, oh, I don't know, but there is this DE server out there. Uh, here's the list of names and <coughs> addresses. Please go there and ask him. And then the resolver asks one of the DE second level domain servers of what is the IPv6 address of www.example.de. Same question, full question. And the DE server says, oh, I have no answer for you, but I know this other guy who is responsible for example DE, please go there and ask him. Uh, and the resolver does. And so then we get an answer back. And the resolver is happy and gives the answer to the client. Now, this data here is not really needed. Mm -hmm. And this data here, is, or this request, is not really needed. Because if the resolver knows that we have root name servers and that we have top-level domain servers, it could just minimize the request. Now, this example the E is, is not a sensitive name, but it could be uh, some sensible website that people don't want to expose to the outside that they go to that website. So there can be DNS requests that are sensible in the privacy sense. Uh, so what does QName minimization now does? It gives the resolver the idea of the structure of the internet DNS, and then the resolver only asks the bare minimum questions for every level to go to the next level. Performance of DNS name resolution with QName minimization is equal to the traditional one, except sometimes it's a little bit faster, but only a little bit. So it's um, four to five percent faster. Um, in some cases, but it's not slower, so you don't have any downsides by enabling QNAME minimization. 
And this is how the same request works with the resolver with QM minimization. It sends to the root, give me the name server for DE, because I have a question for something in DE. So I need, as a next step, I need the name service for DE. But the root name service don't know that the client wants to go to example.de. And then the DE server gets the question, give me the name service of example.de. Again, the DE toggle domain servers don't get the information to what host inside example.de the client wants to go. And only the authoritative server of the domain, of course, that needs to get the full query. And then it sends back the answer. What if one of those servers uh, implements multiple uh, levels of a hierarchy, for example, in reverse DNS. Wouldn't that uh, introduce one uh, round trip per level? Yes. Well, yes. Would it would recover uh, private information leaking, resolving, I work in what skip those levels? And yes, in that so case. So it can introduce additional round trips? Yes. Uh, yeah, normally it's it's not you, you don't delegate for every uh, digit in an IPv6 address. Right. You still have uh, in address uh, IPv6 R part usually delegated. Then you have uh, the the part of the the ISP and then the, the part of the network. So but I, I think that was the point, that uh, that was only little terminals that end up being uh, round trips for every uh, uh, middle in the uh, reverse uh, uh, record. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. That um, I'm not so deep into the implementation, but I don't think it will um, will go through there for every uh, um, nibble in the in the in the IPv6. Hmm? Only if that's a new zone. Well, the, the, the client can't know that. The client doesn't uh, make a distinction between uh, empty node terminals versus a uh, uh, delegated zone. The client cannot see that. Only the name server, uh, the authoritative name server, can, uh, can see that. Uh, the result can also see that from the delegation information. Uh, but only at the point when he's already asked a question. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So QNM minimization is currently available in Unbounced uh, in the non-resolver and it will be in Bind uh, version 9.13, which is the development version. So the stable version out of that will be 9.14. So we will see that in 9.14. If you want to test that, you can already download 9.13 and test it there. Uh, but that's not a stable version. Don't use that in production. Wait for 9.14. If you want to test your network, whether it does QNAM minimization, you can use DIG or any other lookup tools. Ask for TXT record for QNAME mintest.internet.nl, which is a service from SIDM, the .nl registry, plus uh, the people who do the unbound server, the MNLS people. And then it tells you who rate QNAM minimization is enabled or access is not enabled on your machine. So in the BSDs, um, I found QNAM minimization supported because uh, Unbound, NOT, and uh, Bind9 are there. Um, also, DNS over TLS is supported because uh, um, some or most, most, even most of the packages that I listed uh, work on all the BSDs. Um, it seems to be that new system software is mostly written in Go nowadays, and uh, you can think about Go whatever you want, but it just works on fine in compiling that on FreeBSD, OpenBSD, NetBSD, yes. and Dragonfly, so far as I've tested, uh, all the software works there. So, summary, uh, almost done. Um, so, the DNS protocol is evolving quite fast at the moment. Uh, there was a time between 2000 and maybe uh, 2015 where there was almost no development uh, on the DNS protocol, but last years is a lot of things coming to the ITF, a lot of discussion uh, changing the DNS protocols. Uh, some people say even it's too much, uh, like Bert Hubbard from Powerline has wrote this uh, blog post on DNS Camel, mm -hmm. um, where he describes uh, people putting too much on the protocol and it breaks. Uh, which is probably true. 
um, because if you put too much new stuff in there, uh, there's a lot of new code, and new code has always errors in there, security problems, and uh, that can bite us. Um, there's even one RFC that uh, um, uh, says that uh, let's throw away DNS and start something completely new. I don't see that. That would be another IPv6. Uh, that will take ages to uh, to roll out. If the result would be as bad. Yeah, probably yes. <laughs> um, what I see is that in the future, communication between the clients and the resolvers will be encrypted somehow. Yeah. Either DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTPS, or, or yeah. even DNS over QUIC. Um, it can facilitate centralization if we don't. Uh, don't be careful there, but there's also a potential for decentralization. It really depends on what the internet community does about that, and uh, uh, also don't don't blame the ITF. Better go to the ITF and join the discussions, and uh, doesn't and, and help that not a few big players uh, dominate the discussions. And, uh, voice, uh, raise your voice also in the ITF and make sure that the um, internet protocols don't work against. All of us. Um, the new protocols they protect the privacy of DNS users, they increase the security of the communication, but also they decrease the usability of intrusion detection and uh, passive DNS. So, and uh, what can we do today? Uh, we can deploy DNS or TLS on our resolver in our network. That's very easy. Just put a TLS reverse proxy in front of that. Um, that can be done in probably half an hour for people being here. Um, and if you know how to operate a service securely in the internet, then you can try to deploy a public DNS over HTTPS service to have more decentralization. Enable QNAME minimization on your resolver if you have a resolver that already supports that. So if you have Unbound, which is very popular, if you have not, uh, you can do that. Uh, monitor your DNS resolver for malicious traffic, that's always a good idea. Separate resolving and authoritative functions. Yes. You should do yes. that. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You must. <laughs> yeah. Is there anybody who hasn't done that? Yeah, a lot. A lot of people use Bind. <laughs> Bind does both. Why? Because Bind. Yeah, you don't have to use Separate discussion. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, enable DNSSEC validation. Nothing wrong with that. You only gain benefits and consider the inner six signing your zone. That is a little bit more involved, but it's also not as difficult anymore. And don't let key rollovers uh, stop you from doing that. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's 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 if, you, if you do DNSSEC without key rollovers, you are 80% more secure than today, and yes. the last 20% is just the, 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 the top that you can do later. Just do it on the top of October and you're fine. Yeah, yeah right. I can do that. As, as if. So, uh, any questions? Yes. Why not use DNS quick? Um, because there's no uptake. It's, it's, it has not been standardized. Uh, there was no interest in the business to standardize that. Uh, and even the DNS curve is not going away from that. What about DNS amplification attacks over DNS over HTTPS? Uh, DNS amplification attacks works because UDP, uh, because there you can spoof the, the sender's IP address. Sure. You can't do that over TCP, at least to my knowledge. So before, before yeah, everyone runs out, <coughs> don't forget 11th of October this year, the key setting key of the internet will be rolled. If you operate a resolver, make sure you have the new trust anchor. If you don't have the new trust anchor on your system, you won't have internet after 11th of October, 8 o'clock UTC. Uh, 18, 18 UTC. If so, you, um, if you run unbound and open DST as you should, you don't have to worry. <laughs> right? <laughs> if you have automatic updates, but if you started with DNSSEC in the age of 5.9.6, you might have if the old key hard code in your config and then you might not have to Thank you.